Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 154. If you want clarity about your life and or your business, you can schedule a one-on-one coaching session with me. You can send an email to fr at francisrichards.com. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Are you ready to truly transform your business? Then fasten your seatbelt and listen to Million Dollar Mindset Business Coach, also known as the Business Accelerator, Sandra K. Mayu. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you for having me, Dr. Francis. I'm excited. I am super excited. You know, you have such an extensive bio. So why don't you fill in the gaps and share with us what you'd like us to know about you and your company? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for having me. So I run a company called Mac to Clients and we help entrepreneurs take their expertise online, right? We figure out what their superpower is and how to monetize it. And so we help them with anything from their niche, their branding, their marketing, their signature program, all of that amazing stuff. And I love it. We've been doing it for a few years now and we've seen amazing results from our clients. Sandra, talk about Map to Clients. How did you come up with that strategy and that business idea to do that? Do you have a story behind that? You know, I started coaching when I was eight years old, right? Literally eight years old, being in grown people business (laughs) and just putting my mouth where it didn't belong. But one of the things that I started realizing really young was that mindset was such a huge roadblock and that. You know, you could sit around a room and talk and talk, but without the right strategy, you were left with just feeling good and still stuck in your issues. And it was very frustrating for me to see week after week people gathering around my home and trying to help my mom without any real strategies. And so one of the things that I decided at a very young age was I'm going to help women get strategies behind their challenges, right? Yeah, you might be stuck. Yes, you may be trying to start this business for years now and you can't find your way. But I really believe that at the heart of it all is if you have the right strategy, the right tools, you can make it happen. So that's where my personal story started with coaching. But it wasn't an easy path, right? So you are eight years old, you know you like to help people. And then fast forward being 25 years old and trying to figure out my way through this coaching industry. And it was a nightmare and a failure. I got like an F on the business side of things. But on the impact side of things, things were great. You know, people were literally writing me reviews about you changed my life, right? You are amazing. But I'm like, my bank account. (laughs) (laughs) And my husband's like, I I didn't pay you for all that, right? And the answer was always like, they won't. Because the minute I started talking about charging, the people were like, yeah, no, no, thank you. And I started realizing, okay, so my skill is not the issue, Right. My gifting is not the issue. Being called to do this work is not the issue. What's the issue? And I realized that the business side of my business sucked. I didn't have any. So in my journey of trying to figure out how to monetize this gift that I had, I started realizing that there were some holes. There were some things that I did not know. And that the internet, although it's an amazing place, can be a very confusing place as well. So Map to Client was born out of spending a lot of hours trying to do this myself, a lot of money with different coaches, a lot of money in student loans, um, trying to perfect this thing. That's where I created Map to Clients because I knew as I started growing this business, I realized that there were so many other coaches that were talented and gifted, but couldn't make a living coaching. Right. And I said to myself, the minute I figure out how to do this, how to really build something that makes sense financially and impact wise, I want to help coaches because I think that coaches are superheroes. Right. And they just need the strategy. So that's the answer (laughs) to your question around how did map to clients come about? What was the aha moment that you knew 
you had the key to success? When it worked for me, right? When it consistently worked for me, I knew that I had something. I think that the proof is in the pudding. And I cannot dismiss the importance of, so let me say this. One of the biggest misconceptions that I heard growing my business was all you need is a vision. You know, people will say that you just need to have an idea. You just need to have a, a vision of what you want and go for it. And I, for years, went for it with a vision. And the biggest disappointment that I, I realized was the vision is cute. Like, it's nice for you to be gifted. Like, you should be gifted. And, like, you should know how to do the work you set out to do. But that means nothing if you don't know how to run it, if you don't have the funds, right? If you don't have the money to hire the expert that can give you the shortcut, if you don't have the money to market. So the reason I'm answering it this way was I knew that this, I had something when it worked for me and when it was working for the people, for the coaches that were coaching me. Does that make sense? So it wasn't just in my head. It was my results and then their results. So if I had the blueprint, because they gave me the blueprint, because I paid for the blueprint, and they're making seven figure, then I know I'm on the right path. So it was a combination of both. Someone sitting back, Sandra, and they're saying, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've invested in the coaches. I've had the vision. I've had the mission statement. I've had all of these things that the internet and all of these coaches and all of these individuals have said is going to get you to that six figures. And are you telling the audience they need to invest in a six-figure coach? Or if that is not the answer, what specifically should be their next step? It really depends on where they are and what they want, right? Not everybody wants the same thing. You literally have people who want to create impact and that's it. They're working their full-time job and really what they want to do is help a few people. You don't need a six-figure coach for that, right? And should you be investing in a coach? It depends. The reason you invest in a coach in general, the reason you should be investing in a coach is number one, you need to be clear on why, right? What is it that you want? The people that work with me are people that want to build a business. They don't want to just build like a course, like a cheap course for $5.99. You don't need a coach for that. Like literally you can watch a YouTube video and go on Kajabi and upload that $5 course. You don't need a whole coach for that. So clarity around your goals. So if you want to build a business, right, you want to build a coaching business that's going to thrive. My suggestion, you have two paths. You can do it yourself, which is absolutely doable. Like I did that for years and failed. And I know people that did it and were super successful right? So you can take that path or you can say, you know what? I don't, I'd rather pay for somebody else expertise to show me exactly what I need to do. Now, with that being said though, there are a lot of fraud out there, right? You mentioned, you said like, Hey, that people that have already invested. I got the other day, we enrolled somebody in our program who had spent a hundred thousand dollars already with other coaches and had nothing to show for it. So I'm not saying like, just like open up your eyes and say, are you a coach? Here's my money that wouldn't be the wisest thing to do, right? You still have to do your own homework and be clear on what it is that you want. And when you are hiring a coach, ultimately you want to ask yourself, do I want what they have, right? So if you're a Christian coach, like if you're a Christian, a Christian person and you want to really build your business around Christianity, maybe it makes sense to find a coach that aligns with those values, right? If you're a busy mother of four, and you want a life where you can still be very involved in your children's life, maybe you hire somebody that has a couple of kids or at least align with that value. Hiring a coach is not a, a thing. I think people should be, people should take time to pick and select their coach and be clear on what that coach provides. So if you need mindset work, maybe a business coach is not what you need. But if you need business help, you probably want to call me. Right. So knowing who you need for where you are in your business is very important. That was a great value bomb that you dropped there. So the person is listening and they're saying, I'm very clear on what I want. And they're sitting back saying, I 
was similar to that lady who invested a lot of money in coaches and it didn't work out. How do you vet a coach? First question is why did it not work out? Why did it not work out the first time, the second time, the third time, right? Why? Was it the coach? Was it the style of coaching? Was the program too big, right? Because there are programs where you are one out of a thousand, right? Did you like the accountability or were you not ready? And 80% of the time, the person wasn't ready. And taking, and it's okay. We've all taken courses, whether that's in college, in school, at work, where you get into that program course, whatever, and you just, it's just not right timing. Whether it's because you have your own mindset stuff around being visible, right? And so now you're in this coaching program and they're saying you need to go live once a week. And you have unresolved issues around visibility and being seen and taking space. And then suddenly you stop attending your coaching calls because like now they're asking you to do stuff that you didn't quite sign up for. You just wanted to coach and help people. And now they're asking you to be this personality and have this brand. And so maybe you weren't ready then. And acknowledging that before you spend any more money with anyone else becomes very important. Are there horrible coaches out there? For sure, (laughs) right? So was it a bad coach? What made them a bad coach? Why did you hire them in the first place? What do you need to do differently? Those will be the questions. And that's usually the question I ask anybody that gets on the call that has been, that tells me I've had a bad experience with a coach before. Why? Is there a social cause connected to your particular brand and business? Oh, that's an interesting question. So right now, no. Part of my plan for 2020 is starting the process of opening up a school in Ghana for young girls. So no right now. But part of the reason why I started my business was because of my mom. I mentioned that earlier. It was really because of her. And, and I think my passion for helping women, I don't, we don't work with men. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and I have three boys. So that the irony of it all. But part of the social, my social personal kind of reason for doing this, walking away from a six figure job, right? That was five miles away from my house and I could work from home two times out of the week. And I basically was running my own schedule, walking away from that to do this full time. uh, The big reason for me was I knew that there was a need for this, right? I knew that we live in a world where there's so much like people don't realize that your business is only as healthy as you are. And that as women, when we step into the business world, the playing field is not the same. It really isn't, right? It really isn't the same. And I saw that as a young kid, you know, with my mom. Both parents were in business. My mother was in business prior to marrying my father and walked away from her business because my father was like, you got to move and you need to shut that down, right? And they were married for about 10 years and they got a divorce. And my mother basically left with nothing, and was never able to get back to where she was before she met him. And he has, like, his business skyrocketed, best hospital in Cameroon, doing amazingly well. And she was never able to go back to that. Her self-esteem was so destroyed within the marriage that she, and that's what I mean by your business is only as healthy as you are. You can't just be like, oh my, I don't have zero self-esteem, but I'm badass. I, I, sorry if you can't curse on your, but I'm an, this amazing boss woman, right? It's the same woman that's navigating these walls. And so my social cause, or really the reason why I started was my frustration. Because like, all right, you've gone and prayed about it. You came back. Your friends came around here. You all had these kumbaya sessions. You, you, they're still, no, who is going, how is this helping you, right? You feeling good. But it's still like your light is still like there's no light, right? So is this idea for me? And she's so gifted and so amazing. And so many of the women I meet, so gifted, so amazing. No doubt that coaching is what they should be doing or owning their own business. But again, without strategy, without the right coach, without the right coaching, without the right mindset, you lose before you even get started. So what is your mom doing now? So my mom is now grandma. (laughs) Mom mom is like fully happy, fully enjoying her grandchildren. And it's like, if you ask her, she's lived an absolutely fulfilled life. She's living her life through us now, right? 
her sacrifice and everything she endured and everything else, she feels like me watching my daughter and my children thriving and excel is all that I could have asked for, right? So she's being a being a grandma. <laughs> and talk about building your school in Ghana for young girls. What's yeah. pulling at your heartstrings there, Sandra? Yeah, so you know, if we can get them younger, right? I, I and the school that I want to do. I don't just want a school where they go and teach you math and it's great. We're going to teach the basic stuff because, you know, everybody needs a little bit of math. But I want to train the next leaders. I want to, as part of the curriculum, to have projects like, hey, you are starting a new company. I want you to do a case study. I want you to run meetings. I want you to take notes of meetings. I want you to meditate every morning. I want you to learn how to journal. I want to teach them the real skills that, frankly, I didn't have. Like, I had a lot of skills. But when it came to, like, how do you run a meeting? You know, like, how do you hire? How do you fire? (laughs) How do you read a contract without having to go to law school? So that's, I want to create a leadership academy and I want to do it for girls that are either often like underprivileged you know girls girls that society has basically said well you know what it's not looking so good for you those are the girls that are going to be in my school do you have a projection date of when you're going to open who child no <laughs> you know I'm going to throw 2022 out there as a date, but no, I don't have a specific date, but that is like my life dream, right? Is to open up this school and have it successful. So Sandra, if someone spent a day with you, what would they learn that they don't know? Oh my gosh. That they don't know about themselves or me. (laughs) You. Okay. That I'm slightly OCD a little bit. They will learn that I'm not the typical mom. Like I don't bake cakes and from scratch. And and I have actually, I feel, I don't feel bad about it. (laughs) And they will learn that my kids are being trained to just be leaders. Like literally at our dining table, we talk about things like taxes and we talk about the importance of owning your own business. And I'm trying to convince my seven year old that I actually have a business, like that I work. He told me the other day, like, you don't have a job, you need a boss. So trying to convince him that no mommy actually runs a very successful company, but they will also learn my love for the journey. So when I was about 18 or 19, I had a choice to make. I could have become a doctor. My father wanted me to be a doctor. And then I would have gone back to Cameroon and like taken over his hospital. Really good life. Like, trust me, like that. You want that door. Like, that's the good door. If I had a kid, I'd be like, take that door. Take, take that. And I said, no, that's not the door I want. That's super easy. I will always be the daughter of the rich guy that the father struggled and built this empire. And she just had the door open. That's a nice life. Really cool. Life. I can see it really amazing. Not my life. Right. Give me door number two, whatever, whatever is behind number two, whatever. Right. And that was before coaching was a thing. People don't realize that coaching became a thing, like a thing that people talk about without having to explain what it is over only 10 years, give and take. And I said, just give me number two, you know, I'll figure it my way. I'll do it my way. So one thing that they will learn about me is that the love of a journey, the yearning of creating my own path and showing women that you don't have to be in a box, right? By no means am I like the picture perfect mom or even wife or even, you know, a number of things, but I love just the, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with always learning, always evolving. I actually love it. (laughs) It's a little bit scary. (laughs) I love, I love the journey. And I um, appreciate you giving our audience, Sandra, kind of a little bit of history behind coaching. And so I have my experience with being introduced to coaching. Share with our audience about your introduction to coaching. So I was coaching. I didn't know it was coaching. Right. So I started I was putting together prayer lines. I was I had a prayer line about 14, 15 years ago, a group of friends, we were like, you know what? We get on a call and we gossip. Like, do something uplifting, my idea. Can we do something uplifting? I read a book, can't remember the book. Like, we could actually be doing like a book club or like something where we like pray for each other, something like that. They were like, oh, that's cool. So we started doing that for about six months. And then we're like, huh, 
we are so different now than we were when we started out. Like, how about we open it up to the public? And this was way back then where you had like freeconferencecall.com. So we created this group called Children. We called it Children of Destiny. And every week we'll put the prayer line information online and people will call in. Right. And like we'll split. You do the opening prayer. You share the word, the, the word and then you do the closing prayer. It's how we do it. Did that for about like two years. And then at some point, the two friends were like, oh, no, we're done with this. This is too much work. This is like, and we will have like 50 people a week coming to this call. And they're like, we give up, right? You do it. And at that time, I was like, I can't handle that. Like, are you kidding me? Like, no, this is not what I signed up for. They were like, then the prayer line is off. Like, we, we quit. And I couldn't quit, right? I, I don't know how to quit really well. So I kept going. And then at some point, the ladies in the, on the prayer line were like, we should meet. We haven't met. It's been years. I was like, oh, great. Like maybe like a retreat. And they were like, yes. How about a retreat? I was like, that's a great idea. They're like, okay, you plan it and tell us where it is and all that good stuff and we'll come. I'm like, okay. And because I don't know how to do anything like a little bit, I was like, all right, if we're going to do a retreat, we're going to do it. We're going to have a private chef. We're going to have guest speakers. We're going to do it. We're going to rent out a house. It's going to be amazing. So I put my first retreat. Invite a bunch of guest speakers. And one of my mentors, she became my mentor, who came in. She was like, you need to speak. Like, you're going to need to also. So I'm like, oh, no, I don't do the speaking thing. I'm just organizing this stuff. Like, I'm not doing that. And she's like, you have to. It's your retreat. These women, they're coming for you. So I start, you know, kind of like coaching, quotation mark, around it. And obviously, since I was eight, people will come to me for advice. Like, literally, I'm talking 30-year-old women, 50-year-old women, like, literally come to me like, so what do you think I should do? So always, and then I got my master in psychology, so professionally, I'm helping people work through mindset, you know, at work. Doesn't click that it's coaching. Like, it, the, I'm help, in my mind, I'm helping people. It wasn't after, it wasn't for a long time when a PR person who was one of the speakers on my retreat sees me, and she's like, you're a coach. I'm like, what you mean? <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be a coach, is what I tell her. I'm like, everybody's a coach. My seven-year-old could be a coach. Everybody's a coach. I don't want to be a coach. She's like, what do you want to be? I'm like, I don't know, but not coaching. Everybody does that. I don't want to be a coach, right? So that was my introduction. My introduction to coaching was a PR person saying to me, you should be doing this for a living. Like, it's incredible what you do, right? And me saying, I don't want to coach because everybody coaches. <laughs> That was my intro. So then bring fast forward. How did you decide? Yes, I'm going to be a coach. How did you accept the assignment? I had already been coaching. So when I sat back and thought about it and said, okay, you've been doing this since you were eight. Recognize that and ask myself, is it a pride thing? <laughs> you know, like, is it really just a pride thing at this point? The biggest inner challenge I was having was that I did not want to be a life coach. I knew that for me, I love strategy too much, business strategy too much, only do mindset. And I love mindset, but not enough to just be like, let's talk about your mindset. And then they cut off your light. Like that to me is frustrating. Like for what frustrates me the most in life is like somebody is working with a client and they're like, I feel so good. I did my morning rituals and I'm so Zen. And then we like, and you know, and my husband yelled, I didn't yell. And then we talk and you talk and you talk. And then at the end you're like, Oh, okay. Um, how about the next session? It's going to be X amount. They're like, Oh, I can't do it. Cause I got fired. But guess what? I have my skills. I have my mindset skill. I, all is well, we'll figure it out. That drives me insane. So when I was thinking about coaching, I felt like I had to choose between life coaching and business coaching. And that, like, that inner conflict was driving me nuts. Because I felt like I had to be in a box. And that's something that your listener might relate to. Because a lot of coaches we talk to, part of the challenge they, they're facing is around niching down. It's around figuring out, like, I could help a lot. I could be your, listen, for mindset stuff, my clients would tell you, I can sort out your mindset. I'm good at it, right? I could make that work. But that's not my sweet spot. So one of the things within our program, because I knew how challenging that had been for me, is to help you really figure out not only what makes sense from a business perspective, but also what feels the most in alignment. 
And the good news is it doesn't have to fit a specific box, right? I'm literally at that cross between that life coach and that business coach. Like that intersection is what our program is all about. But yeah, to answer your question. So Sandra, talk about your most memorable moment in life or business. Most memorable moment in life. Ooh, in life. Okay. The most memorable moment in life was when my, uh, my mentor, the one I talked about earlier, who was like, you need to speak. We had just wrapped up a retreat and I asked her, what did you think? I think this was our best retreat. Like it was amazing. The chef, the, did you see the reviews? Like the women's life completely transformed. It was amazing. What do you think? And she said to me, well, Sandra, you're hiding. No, no. She said, she said, where are you? She said, where are you? And I said, what do you mean? I'm here. She's like, no, no, no. Why have you been hiding? And I said, I don't hide. Have you checked my social media? <laughs> and she's older. She's uh, mid seven, mid, mid 70. I was like, have you checked? I was, I was like, have you checked my social media? I am all over social media. I don't hide. Like I don't mom. I call her mom. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't hide wrong person. Not me. And she said, no, you hide. You don't show up as your full self. You are playing small. And I don't know, like, if you've ever put together, like, what you thought was your best moment. And for somebody to be like, oh, that's like 15%. I'm sure they're clapping over there, but let's get real. That's nothing. It's basically what she was saying. And I said to her in that moment, my most memorable moment in life is when I said back to her, with this knowing, I said, you're right. I have been hiding in plain sight. And that moment changed my whole entire life. I went, after that, I wrote books. I spoke at NAACP. Like, my life, that acknowledgement that somebody saw me, because for the listeners that are either aspiring coaches or in helping profession, when you're always helping others, it's so easy for you to blend in the fabric of your life or their life. Right. Because you don't make it about you. You make it about helping them. And who doesn't want to be helped? And so for somebody to call you out and another reason why everybody needs a coach is because for somebody else to look at you and see you, she saw me. She saw me past my accomplishment. She saw me past the reviews. She saw the real me and my real potential. If she had never, if I had never had that conversation, I wouldn't be here today with you. I'll be working somewhere, getting paid really well. Right. And having a very quiet, steady uh, (laughs) life. But I wouldn't be here. Talk about your mentor or your mentors and someone saying, I've never had a mentor. How do I find a mentor? How do I vet someone? Mm -hmm. What do I look for to even go that route? Yeah, I really believe that when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. I truly believe that I don't even I don't. My experience has been that I don't go out seeking for a mentor, you know, and and for people listening to it, I don't mean that you don't do nothing. (laughs) I mean that the the inner work of getting ready, because it's a very serious thing. I, I, you know, and unless there's a difference between mentorship and coaching, let's be clear, right? When I think of a mentor, my mentor, I don't pay my mentor, Right. It's more of a, this person is where I need, I want to be in the future. And I have great reverence, you know, and great respect for this person. They have accomplished something in one area of their life. It doesn't have to be the whole, it doesn't have to be goals, right? It doesn't have to be like every single aspect of their life is what I want. It could simply be like the way that they are as a mother is exactly who I want to be. I want them to mentor me around the area of being an amazing mother. The, but they might be, they might not own a business and that's okay. So clarity around, like, what do you need, right? Where's the gap? Understanding the, impor- the, the no, number one, valuing your mentor. Sometimes people will go to people that they should be paying and say, oh, oh, I can't afford you. Can you mentor me? Right. Just because they don't want to pay. So let's be careful. Right. And also knowing like for me, my mentors, we don't have weekly meetings. They don't owe me anything. Literally, if I can get five minutes of their time, I'm happy to get five minutes of their time, right? And the burden or the responsibility of keeping the relationship going, I think is on the mentee. 
I think it's on the, like, I never see, like, like, I can't believe my mentor didn't call me and it's been a month. Like, no, right? The responsibility is on me. So when you say you want a mentor, you have to be sure that you are at a place where you are open to suggestions and that you value their time and that you don't come to them with things you could Google and that you've used their content. Like, don't go to a mentor. Like, don't say, Sandra, I want you to mentor me and you haven't read any of my books. You haven't watched any of my free stuff. Not so. Okay, come on. Right? So it's really being clear that you know what you're wanting from the relationship and that you're ready and that you ask. You know, I've asked the mentors that have come into my life. I've literally said, hey, I really want you to mentor me. I admire, and who doesn't like flattery? So, you know, I admire you and, and I read this about you and I followed you and I really would love to for you to mentor me. It won't be, I'll respect your time. I just need maybe five minutes of your time whenever you get, you know, it, it's that because they're busy. Typically these mentors, they're busy and they have lives. But yes, that's my answer. And how important is it? It's critical. I don't know any successful, anyone who doesn't have a mentor or one or multiple coaches. So I have multiple mentors and I have coaches. I have a life coach. I have a, a business coach as well. Um, and I have a spiritual mentor. We can learn from successful entrepreneurs like yourself or brands. Tell us a brand or business that is dominating that you admire and why. In the coaching world, Obviously, Tony Robbins has been at the top for me for a long time. And for me, it's what I admire about him is just the length of his career, right? And he actually paved the way for, you know, when he started, he had to explain and fight with therapists and psychotherapists and psychiatrists around what coaching is. People were like, are you a football coach? <laughs> what are you coaching people with? Like, if it's not football or sport. So I really love what he's done. And I love that he's not in one box, right? And he plays in so many different, whether that's the financial world, the coaching world. And I also love his stamina. I mean, dude can be on stage for 10 hours. No break. Like, how do you do that? You know, like how, I just want to know how you do that and keep your energy at that level for that long. So I like Tony Robbins just because to me, he's the father of coaching. Really like his business model. I really like, from a brand perspective, Bishop Jakes. And what I like about him is, again, not being in a box, being more than what people assume a preacher uh, should be. So a theme with like, the people that I admire a lot is people that defy what society or what people or even what the profession expect right, of them. Those are the people that I admire the most because one of my struggles was not wanting to be put in any type of box. Sandra, what is one valuable lesson you wish you knew before starting your business? That is going to be hell of expensive. <laughs> that is going to cost money. I wish somebody somewhere had said, you need a vision and you need money. Like, I don't know why that, and money, not just any money, you need money for marketing. Like that part, Right. Because I had heard, like, yeah, you need money rebranding. So, yes, everybody knows that you should build a website. That's going to cost you money. You should take pictures. That's going to cost you money. Like, we all know that. But money with marketing, with having people outside of your mommy and your cousins and your friends and your church mates know that you exist is the heartbeat of your business. That while you spend more money going back to school, more money to get a certification, more loans or whatever – you should be saving that money or putting money aside for people to know you, know your product, right? That somehow I feel like is missing. I didn't hear that information. My clients don't always realize that. And they're like, oh, my friends and family are not supporting me. I'm like, did you start your business? Like, no, we need to build a business that's bigger than your friends and family. That's the only way you have a shot. What is a technology tool or a technology platform that is a must have for you in managing your business day to day? Uh, Google Drive, Google, the whole Gmail suite, but the drive specifically, because then you can edit, collaborate, uh, share documents. I really like it, but I have a ton. I'm a software geek. So this could be like a whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. Who are your top two influencers in your life and what lessons do they teach you? My dad and mom, 
my dad taught me the importance of perseverance. Like you don't give up. Like we don't know how to give up. Like it's not something that is we know how to do. Like we'll be like we give up, but hold on. <laughs> We have one more idea, one more try. So his inability to quit, period. Learned that and then also just his love for the process. I learned that from him. And my mother is the heart, right? Is that business of people are not black and white. And that structure and strategy is amazing, but people are people, right? That you can close more deals by being human than you can with the software, so just connecting with people on a real level, I learned that from mom. What is your biggest achievement so far in your business today? I mean, for sure, hitting six-figure months consistently, great, right? And be on our way to be a seven-figure business, for sure, that's great. Those are really good numbers. But for me, it's my clients. Being able to see clients, so I'm thinking about one of our clients, Elena, for example, who came to me, like the, our first sales conversation she was on the call, literally shaking, saying, I feel like God told me I should do this, but I think he picked wrong. I think I may need to go back and fast because I have, I, I don't know how to do it. Absolutely don't know how to do this. And me saying to her, I got you, right? And she had no website. She didn't know what niche she wanted to go after. She didn't have a brand, like nothing. She didn't have an offer, nothing, which is what most, how most of our clients come to us anyway. And watching her four months later, launching her program, selling out of her coaching program and impacting more lives, right? That's why I coach. Let's be clear. The money is great, like all that stuff. But I coach because I believe that coaches, women coaches are world changers. That world needs more coaches. Like we, we as a society, we need coaches. Like it's not a nice to have. It's not like, honestly, like I think we all need somebody in our corner saying, I've gone down that path. I took really good notes. Let me show you my notes. And plus, guess what? I'm going to cheer you on. Your family members may not believe in you because you made some mistakes. You may not believe in you anymore, but I'm right here. I ain't going to quit on you. We're going to get to the finish line. We all need that. Sandra, what are three truths that you've learned in life or business so far? It's never as bad as you think, right? So even when it looks like, all right, I can't, like, this is it. We are one month away from, from losing it all, from closing doors. It's never as bad as you think, right? Number one. The second truth is that there's the easy path and there's the business path. But you can't, you, you can't have, you have to pick one. Business is going to challenge the core of who you are completely. And so if you want the easy path, I suggest that you work for somebody, right? And the third truth that I've learned is that it doesn't have to be hard. You know, that it can flow, that there's a space where you can be in alignment and have everything, past mistakes, learning, have all those things actually work for your good and be in a place of flow, that you don't have to hustle for every client for every dollar you make, there's this place of flow. But in order for you to get to that place of flow, you need to have your systems, your automation in place, right? But it's possible. You, it doesn't have to be hard for you to have a successful business. How do you stay fit mentally and physically? Cool, child. So two things that I started. So this is 2020, beginning of the year. First thing is I'm doing a 30-day challenge, cold water challenge. And if you've never tried it and you're listening to me and you want and you want to see the many ways that your brain can come up with like arguments around why you don't need to shower daily, <laughs> do a 30 day challenge. But the reason I wanted to do the 30 day cold day challenge and just take cold water so cold shower every day in the morning and it's winter time. I just want to tell everybody this is not summertime. This is winter. That's one of the ways that that was one of the challenges I wanted to put myself through, because if I could start my day with doing one thing I don't like and do it, I knew that I could tackle all the areas in my business, in my life that I didn't quite, you know, there's always something you don't want to face. So challenges like that, putting myself through challenges. So I always have to up level crazy things like taking cold shower where you could just turn on the warm shower. It's mentally the stuff that I do having a solid morning routine. That is a non-negotiable period. 
And I've done that for the last two years, every single morning. It doesn't matter where I'm at in the world. It's the mental part. Physically, I do a walk. And it's quotation mark. Y'all can see me. It's quotation mark. I don't run. I'm walking. I walk about it's two miles every morning, Monday to Sunday. And I've just added some strength training to that. Because we're trying at this point to get to get toned and look good. It's more of a vanity thing at this, <laughs> at this point. But yes, those are the, the ways that I stay fit mentally and physically. Sandra, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question that you would have asked yourself? And I want you to ask the question and answer it. Oh, okay. The one question would be, what was your darkest, scariest decision or moment, right, of your business that you almost didn't make through? You didn't, You almost didn't make it through, right? What was that moment where you would have made a different decision and your business would have fallen apart or you would have not had the business? Be my question that I would have asked myself or asked you in the interview And the answer is, it was when I was thinking about hiring my first coach. I had called, I I was running the business and it's quotation mark. Y'all can see me in quotation and y'all can relate to that. You kind of in business, you kind of have said, you know, you have registered the business kind of, you've put it on social media that you own this business, but your husband and your family, no girl, you're not making no dime in this business. We know the truth. You're going live and acting like the business is successful when your husband's like, girl, what are you going to give up? Because this is costing us money, right? And you're barely holding on to the business. You don't even believe in it anymore, but you're doing research after research and stalking people on social media, trying to figure out what they're doing, throwing things, hoping something sticks. You're mad at friends and family. You're not talking to some family members because they didn't come to your event. You know what I'm talking about. And so I called this coach because really I didn't want to hire a coach. I just wanted to know why are you so successful? I just want to know how does she run her, I was doing my research. How is she running her business? That was the only intent because I didn't think I needed coaching. I was working full time as a business analyst for a billion dollar company. You know, I was like running projects. Like what do I need a coach for? Like I'm in companies helping these companies make business decisions. So I'm just calling to do my homework. And I'm on the call, and then I'm like, okay, if you're going to do your homework, really act like you need the help. So I'm answering questions, and she's asking questions, and I'm like crying almost, because like now I'm coming as the real me. She's like, how much money have you made? I'm like, I haven't made any money this year. And like literally getting into the conversation and forgetting to take notes of the questions she's asking. And then at the end of the call, she says to me, my program costs, I think it was like 8000 something like that. And I'm like, I, my, I stopped crying right there and then. I was no longer in tears. I was fine. I could see clearly now. My brain was back. I was like, how much you say? She said $8,000 and you have 24 hours to make a decision or I won't take you on. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. I like you. I think you're amazing. I'm, I really love what you've accomplished in your life. I don't got 8000 Like, I just have to be honest. I don't have 8000 She's like, oh, you could take a loan. I'm like, I'll call you back. I hang up. And I'm sitting in the parking lot of my job. It's hot. And I'm like, every window is closed because like, this is work hour. <laughs> and I'm having a God, the moment was me having a God conversation. I don't even know how you call it. And I say to God, you've put this in me since I was eight. I've wanted to quit. I don't even want to do this work. I literally, like, this is more like of a hustle now. Like, I don't want, I, can you take this? I don't have 8,000. You know I don't have 8,000, God. Like, we know this. What am I supposed to do? And you know my credit is bad. You know this. If I call the bank, they're going to be like, oh, we've been looking for you. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Right? And in that car, if, I had, if it had gone differently, we wouldn't be here. And something tells me, just call. Just call so you can make it to heaven. Just call so when you get to the pearly gate, you can say to God, let me tell you what I did with those gifts. I called the bank. And guess what they said? No no loan. Like, that's literally why I called the bank. I called the bank and I said to the woman on the call, ma'am, this is a destiny moment. She's like, ma'am, can I have your social security number? (laughs) I just work here. And I say, okay, so I give my social security number and all that good stuff. She runs it. And I know for a fact, I'm not getting this loan. I know my credit score. I'm not getting it. And she's like, oh, you've been approved for like almost three times more than what I ask. And I'm like, ma'am, you have the right name. 
She's like, yes, I do. Long story short, I hired that coach, right? She showed me the blueprint. And my business, I mean, I made, I think I made the money back in more four months. No, so the program was three months. It took me a month after the program. But the moral of the story is number one, in my mind, I was like, why should I spend $8,000 on a dream, right? Why should I spend $8,000 on a dream that hasn't been paying off? It doesn't make sense on paper. I've been doing this for years. It's not working. Why should I do that, right? And I started thinking about but how much you owe in, owe in student loans. You've taken hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in an education that you may or may not have really wanted to use. But why are you not willing to invest in your purpose, in this business, in this dream? So when you say it's not working, what's not working? Because if you had not gone to medical school and you were trying to open somebody up and you couldn't do it, you wouldn't say it's not working. You would say, I just don't know how to do it. Right. So it was that moment of realizing I ju- it's not that I'm not good. It's not that I'm not called. It's not that I shouldn't be doing this. It's that I need help. So for everybody listening, needing help, there's nothing wrong with needing help. We all need help. Right. But it's really having to have a real conversation around, is this an $8,000 word dream? Do you really believe in it? Is it? And if it's not, that's okay. But that was the most critical life or death of my business decision that I had to make. And I'm so glad that I took the loan. Sandra, that was an amazing story. Thank you so much. And you definitely tell your mentor you showed up and showed out. So share with our audience, they're saying, wow, I want to connect with Sandra. I want her to be my business accelerator, my personal coach. Tell us your handles and how they can connect with you. Sure. So it's my first and last name, and I'm going to spell it out. (laughs) Uh, So my website is the hub where you can find all information Sandra came at you. So that's Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A, and my last name, Kimayu, which is K as in Kim, E, M as in mom, A-Y-O-U.com. Sandra Kimayu.com is my website. And right there, you will see my Facebook handle, Instagram handle, Twitter handle. So one home, just go in there. You also have access to our free training. So if you're a coach listening right now and you're like, I want more information. I want more. I want to know exactly like how can I turn things around? If I'm just starting out, there's a training on there um, is how to ditch the overwhelm and get consistent clients. Go on the website, log in and watch that training. That's like the very first step. And if you want to send me an email, sk at sandrakimari.com. Sandra, thank you so much. Any parting bit of information you want to share with the audience? No, the only thing that I always say, no matter where I'm at, where I'm speaking, who I'm speaking to, is that you got it. You know that if God called you, he equipped you. And so, you know, this whole imposter syndrome, and I've been in many rooms with many people, and I've sat in many rooms where I'm like, how did you end up here? You shouldn't be here. <laughs> but they're sitting in the room. And, and the my thing that I tell women is take space own your voice, right? And know that if you're in a room, you deserve to be in that room. Own space, take space, and let your voice be heard. Is And know that you have it in you. Like, I believe in you. You have it in you. If you have a dream, there's a reason for it. There was a reason when I was eight years old, that dream was put inside of me, right? There's no mistake. So if you feel like through this conversation, you wrote some things down, you're like, I'm going to go for my business, girl. I'm already coaching you through. Go for it. Thank you, Sandra. That is a wrap. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Francis. Take care. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.